called the Sixth Parish. Music for our sound response and Advent Mass parts can be found in the worship aid in the pews. Our presider at this Mass is Father Matthew, assisted by Deacon Ron. Please join together and sing our gathering song number 395, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Number 395.
Let us pray. O oh God, see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always, with a solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated for me. Prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am setting my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a style of nativity scenes that I often like to talk about during the Advent season, where it is more or less a picture of the scene in the town of Bethlehem, where people are running to and fro, they're going to the different places, trying to be counted in the census, and through all this hustle and bustle, you're trying to find the Christ child, you're trying to find the scene in the nativity that oftentimes is just put right in front of you, that there is no missing. This style of art is, in a sense, a where is Waldo of the nativity, that you're trying to see where our Lord truly is. For many of us, that is, at times, our approach for joy. That is something that needs to be found in our lives. And in a similar way, in that picture of trying to find the Lord, we can do the same technique. The first is trying to take away any of the objects, any of those things that are, in a sense, not of God. And we do that too in our lives to say, what is not of God so that I can find the joy in my life? Am I too concerned with worldliness? Am I too concerned with worry? Am I too concerned with this or that? 
that is stealing my joy. And so we say, Lord, in your grace, take those things away. Take those things that are not of God. And it might even be struggles that we have in sinfulness, that the Lord is able to take that away through this sacrament of reconciliation, so that, that those might be taken away, so that we might be able to find our joy. Second, we look at the image of other people to see how the Lord is caring for them or how we can aid in the care for them as you hear about in the gospel. Are we able to allow the lame to walk or give them the aid we need of a shoulder to lean on? Are we able to help the blinded see or can we be that resource for them in order to see the world in a different way? Can we fulfill that mission of the prophet Isaiah through our Lord in this time? And even much more than their physicality, can we do that in that spiritual nature? To remind them that though they may not be able to walk as well, they're able still to follow the path of the Lord. Though they are not able to speak well, they're able still to proclaim the word of God in their actions and in their lives. Are we able to be in that same aspect that Isaiah has shown us that the Lord is doing here and now in that way of faith? And as we're able to see that in the picture of the nativity, we're able to take away those people who have been helped so that we might come closer to seeing the Lord. And finally, in that same way of finding joy, as well as helping people, as well as taking those things that are not of God, is to look upon the face of the Lord. And as we are able to look at the face of the Lord, we're able to acknowledge in gratitude what the Lord continues to do for us. To say that the Lord has given us a Savior, and so thanks be to God. The Lord has made us in His image and likeness, and we say, thanks be to God. The Lord has loved us, and we say, thanks be to God. We're able to come back to that source of our joy as God has given it to us in our very creation and in our very sustenance of life. And then that we're able then to reflect in that scene of love between our Blessed Mother, Joseph, and the Lord, that great imaging of joy. That we're able to reflect that joy to say, Lord, you have done so many good things for us. Lord, I'm able to help others through your grace, and so that creates that extra joy. Lord, there is no separation between you and I, and so that joy is able to be magnified. It's something that we celebrated in our uh, prayers for the Immaculate Conception, that our Blessed Mother realized all that, was able to realize all the Lord has done for her, and so she proclaims that gift of gifts, <coughs> that her soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, that her spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. That she was able again to see how she was able to have no distractions and see the Lord Himself apart from sin in her immaculate conception. She was able to see how she was able to help another person in rushing toward Elizabeth. And once more, she was able to see the Lord. And so her soul was magnified by what the Lord continues to do for her and for us. My dear sisters and brothers, let us continually find joy in our lives. And when it is difficult, let us take time to search for it. For it is truly important, a great gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And through that, may we be like the Blessed Mother and allow our souls to be magnified by God and to rejoice in the Lord always in our life here on earth and eternally. My dear sisters and brothers, let us offer our profession. <coughs> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God, God, the light and the light, the true God and the true God, the God and not me, the substantial of the Father. Salvation, he came out of heaven. My God, the Holy Spirit, was a part of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified.
church that we may never hesitate to proclaim the good news in the face of conflict, poverty, and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our leaders in government, that they may respond to the voices of the voiceless, the poor, the homeless, the marginalized, the imprisoned, the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That we may embrace the message of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the Americas, and work to bring people together of different cultures and languages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prophets in today's world who are maligned or persecuted for proclaiming difficult truths that need to be heard, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may employ eyes of faith so that we never lose sight of the potential for goodness in each other and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed relatives and friends and all the souls of the faithful departed, including David Moreau and Donald Colziel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions and the prayer requests at the Mother of Mother Shrine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ron Grislak, Jim Burns, Walter Foles Jr., Mary Anderson, Betty and Charlie, Pavlik, Pavlik, and the Basic family, for the intentions of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and write them according to your will. We ask them to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all of our holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, the Lord we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what is begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish a for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to be thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you soon at his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the designs you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Gather people to yourself. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your king. <coughs> Therefore, o Lord, may humbly implore you by the same spirit, richly make holy these gifts we have brought to for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer a thanksgiving this orderly and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognize that the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hugh, St. Paul the Sixth, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession and presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity of the church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you gave for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family and do summon before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you by their past in this life, give kind and minister to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy for the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in this world all that is good. Through him and with men in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we would be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the earth, the earth. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, that not in our sins by the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us now share with each other a sign of Christ's peace.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
The Giving Tree Gifts are due tomorrow, Sunday, December 11th by 12 noon. This Monday, December 12th, is the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The Bible Mass is at 7 p.m. at St. Mary Church. A potluck dinner fiesta, fiesta with mariachi will follow in the parish center. Please drop off your potluck items before Mass. Our parish reconciliation service is this Tuesday, December 13th at 6.30 p.m. at St. Mary Church. Last call to Luminaria. Orders are due this Tuesday. Eucharistic minister training is this Thursday, December 15th at 7 p.m. at Mater Christi Church. Las Posadas is this Friday, December 16th at St. Mary's, and Monday, December 20th at Mater Christi. Both evenings begin at 7 p.m. The Simbad V Holy Mass will now take place next Saturday, December 17th at 5 p.m. here at Mater Christi. This will be the regular anticipated Mass at Mater Christi next weekend. Classes to prepare high school students for First Communion and Confirmation begin in <coughs> December and January. Call Maria Ramos or Elizabeth Kloss in the Faith Formation Office to register your team. Information on all parish events and service opportunities can also be found in our bulletin website and e blast. And please join in singing our closing hymn, number 409, People in Peace, number 409. Good evening, everyone. I'm Monica Massetti, and I'm proud to serve on the St. Paul VI Finance Council. And I've been asked to share this financial update with you all. June 30th, 2022 marked the end of the 2021-2022 fiscal year for St. Paul VI Parish. As we move into our second year, we realize that we are still recovering from the consequences of the COVID pandemic, as well as the demanding work to become one united faith community. In spite of some very difficult challenges, we made it through good leadership, creative management, and the help of the Holy Spirit. I have some key points that our finance council would like to highlight. July 1st, 2021 saw the unification of three parishes into St. Paul VI Parish. The Archdiocese combined the three previous budgets and projected a year-end loss of $172,000 for our parish. Through a combination of pooled resources, staff reductions, parish office hour reductions, and improved vendor management, we were able to cut our loss to $120,000. These improvements and changes put in place will continue to impact our financial plans for fiscal year 2023 and have resulted in a projected break-even budget. We are currently ahead of our budgeted Sunday collections and are hopeful that this will continue, especially as more of our parishioners come back to church now that the Cardinal has lifted dispensation. We're also hopeful that the, our Christmas collection will improve as compared to last year's, which was negatively impacted due to the resurgence of the COVID virus and lower mass attendance. St. Mary's School continues its mission of offering a superb Catholic education to our faith community, and we proudly serve children from 24 zip codes. This year, the school opened a third pre-kindergarten classroom and is now one-on-one -on -one for technology in students from grades K through eight and continues before and after school programs to help accommodate working parents' schedules. The school ended fiscal year 2022 with a small deficit of $14,500, which is directly related to lower enrollment due to the pandemic. Currently, the school is budgeting a $40,000 loss for fiscal year 23, which is directly attributed to a small decline in enrollment to date, and the school is currently accepting children of all grades. As parishioners, we share a duty of stewardship to maintain and improve our parish, and to help us achieve sustainable financial um, stability, we ask you to consider the following. Please consider signing up for automatic offertory donations by visiting our website and clicking on the donate button, or feel free to call the parish office for assistance. Please consider donating to the Invest in Kids Tax Credit Scholarship Program and designating St. Mary's School as your gift recipient. 
you'll receive an Illinois income tax credit in the amount of 75% of your donation to this program. Your donation will be applicable to your 2022 Illinois state income tax and may be eligible for a one-on-one -on -one match from archdiocesan donors if your donation is made in December of this year. Please contact St. Mary's school office or the parish office administration staff for assistance and additional details. Our parish is currently operating debt free and this provides us the opportunity to improve our overall financial health. We're seeing a stabilization of our financial needs during the early part of the fiscal year and parish leadership continues to take steps to improve operational efficiencies. These initiatives include seeking grant funding, the further consolidation of staff and careful consideration of capital expenditures. We wish to thank Fathers Tom and Father Matt for their spiritual leadership and direction. Our parish is blessed with many generous, supportive, and energized parishioners. With your continued participation in prayers, we're confident that St. Paul VI is moving forward in a positive direction and will faithfully serve the mission of Christ in his church. Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and your first coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may it make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and be with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks to God. God.